Okay, so the floor is yours, Professor Francisco. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate very much the opportunity to be here in this seminar to present the study of conductive fabrics uh, for line implantation application, just the second part, the experimental part. Uh, my name is Francisco Roman, on, and I am presenting this work, which belongs mainly to the PhD work of Jorge Alejandro Cristancho, who is from our research group. And uh, some other participants of the group are Jorge Rodriguez, Carlos Rivera, uh, Daniel Rodriguez, and from the mechanical department of our university is uh, uh, Dr. Engineer Liz Herrera. So, the next slide is just to show why we are interested in this research work and why we started to work here in Colombia, the study of conducting textiles. What you see here is the well-known uh, world lining map of, uh, prepared by, by Zala. And uh, what we see here is that in the equatorial zone, we have a lot of lining activity. Then in this region, in the equatorial region, we have the most lining of the world and Colombia is located here and you see the black spots indicated a very high lining activity in our country. If we go closer to this map, we see that in Colombia, we have some places with more than 64 strokes per square kilometer per year. And you see that is in the northern part of Colombia, which is not far from the place where most lining in the world uh, are, which is uh, in the Catatumbo area of Venezuela. And these photographs shows uh, how possible victims of lining usually sleep closed places where lighting appears. So we have to protect people, especially soldiers, I will show later. But first, I would like to show uh, the main coupling mechanisms of lighting with people, with persons. Uh, we think that direct stroke could be the main reason for lighting strikes, for lighting deaths or fatalities, but not. Mainly, three to five percent are direct lightning or direct lightning to for example a mast and you are in contact with this element you have just uh, six to ten percent most lightnings are mainly upward streamers ten percent but it's well known that we don't have to to go close to a tree when you have a learning activity because you have aligning discharge from the tree to the person. This is side flat, and this is around 30%. This is a very important part. But the most important part is here, is the impact of people who are, go, who are walking close to a place where we have aligning discharge. For example, if we are in the neighborhood 20 meters from the lining impact, there is a very high voltage between step and this is the so-called step voltage. If you go further away, you have a lower voltage. But the problem we have in Colombia is that people are sleeping close to these places, which are soldiers, and these produce a very high voltage between head and head. So if we continue uh, with this statistic. It shows that if we protect people uh, against the, these two events, we will protect them around 50 to 80, uh, uh, excuse me, 80 to 90 percent. Uh, also, if they, are, they have protection and they are walking, we can also protect against this event. Therefore, I would like to show you what are the problems related with lightning in our country. Uh, as is mentioned in the literature, India has the most amount of accidents and Malawi, which are 1,755. And uh, this is around two, two fatalities per million inhabitants. If we go to the case of Colombia, we have just 76 victims per year, 
but this is more or less 2%. This is also similar to the events in India. Of course, there are some places uh, like uh, Malawi and Zimbabwe with uh, a very high lining uh, uh, number of fatalities due to this event, as mentioned by Roll Holle. But the problem is in the army, in the Colombian army, if we divided the victims by the number of soldiers, we will have a very high lining uh, fatality number, which is 117 per million. That's why we start studying this problem, uh, considering the statistics of lining casualties in the army. You see here the red lines indicate the fatalities and as a mean value of 10 years there is almost 11 persons and the number of victims is three times higher uh, the, the injured people which is the green line so if we look at the mean values we have one death per month and three injured in colombia in those statistics are from 10 years, that is more or less like in the middle age. Uh, to solve this problem, we patent uh, tents by using conducting textiles in 2018 with Professor Felix Vega, Professor John Pantoja and myself. And uh, uh, this is the result of more than 20 years of analyzing lightning accidents in our country. And the principle was to construct a Faraday cage with conducting textiles on the floor and on the roof, and also with conductors which can carry the current, uh, the lining current to the ground. Uh, first, we start analyzing some simulations and we see the electric fields <coughs> around the person by using CST simulation. We see that it's several million volts uh, per meters, what you will have if you have an impact on the tent. But if we use conducting textiles, the electric field will be reduced a lot, several times at least three orders of magnitude. Uh, therefore, we start doing experiments. This is in the high voltage laboratory of our university. We have here one million volt uh, impulse current, impulse voltage generator. And what we have here is a, a model of this tent with the conducting textile. When we apply, for example, 400 kV, and there is an impact uh, to the tent, we see that the current flows and you have breakdown somewhere here, as you can see better in this photograph. And the current is flowing over the surface and you have breakdown somewhere here. But the interesting thing was that we have observed on the material, on the conducting textile, after doing this experiment, there are some patterns which are perpendicular to, re, to the current flow. Therefore, we decided to start to study these events. To do that, we use our impulse current generator from the university, which is able to produce eight to 20 lightning currents, uh, and the maximum amplitude is 100 kilo ampere by placing the objects on the test, the textile, the conductive textile, like that, the current will flow in this direction. And uh, you will see that the principle is to charge an, a very big capacitor to very high voltage. And then when the spark, uh, we have a spark here in the spark gap, the current will flow through the textile which is the object under test. And here we will measure the current with our Rogowski coil, and we will uh, bring it to the oscilloscope. And uh, as you hear, see here, you, we also measure voltage, the voltage across the test sample by using a high voltage prop. Uh, there are uh, several perf uh, uh, experiments were performed in five, uh, objects of five different materials and they were weighted before the experiments and a four current were applied to the test object. 
uh, with five kiloamps at first, and then it was increases around five kiloamps uh, to reach 18 kiloamps in the samples. After those experiments with a time difference of five minutes, uh, current and voltage were measured uh, to obtain the energy which was dissipated on the samples. On the other hand, after the experiments, the samples were tested, were, were weighted again to see the loss of material after the experiments. And we use a scan electron microscopy and uh, optical microscopy to see the effect of the current on the textiles. And uh, of course, the, in this, in this uh, graph, you will see the current and energy curve. It indicated the energy which was dissipated in the samples. You see that in the first case was around five, and in the last case, almost 30 or 40 joules were dissipated on the, on the sample. And uh, we, it was possible to see uh, some materials which were not useful for these experiments because of the loss of uh, the amount of energy dissipated there. Here you see some examples of uh, our observation. First on rip stop fabric, you see this type of material uh, which is very interesting because you see how the, the material is is very well constructed. And uh, you see the difference here with the non-woven material. And uh, the scan electron microscopy here shows the dimensions and of the material which was, which was used for the experiment. And here you see also after the experiment, the loss of material in this non-woven fabric indicates that the material was probably vaporized. In this photograph, you see the cross section of the conducting material. You see a small, this small surface indicates the amount of uh, conducting material, which is, a, 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 which is used to conduct the current. And if we see this uh, ripstop fabric, you will see that we will have more than 1,000 fibers conducting the current. If we go closer to the scanning electron microscopy, the SEM microscopy, you will see the loss of material, in this case, 10 micrometer in ripstop. And we, if we go closer, you see clearly this, the, the non-conducting material, the polyethylene, and how the conducting material has been vaporized. You see the drops of material. In the case of a uh, ripstop fabric with flame retardant material, you will see also loss of material. Of course, uh, probably the, the loss of material is lower, but the effect is not exactly the same as in the pure ripstop fabric. In the case of plain wave fabric, you'll see the fibers which are not so organized like in the ripstop fabric, and we see a lot of loss of material which is not so organized as in the case of ripstop. And in the non woven fabric, we see that uh, the loss of material is not so clear defined as in the case of ripstop fabric. You see also the micro photographs with some material, vaporized material and melted material, metallic material. So we go closer to the experiments performed uh, in uh, 10 times 10 centimeter samples with a resist resistance of around 20 milli ohm. And you see the, the perpendicular marks uh, to the current flow that has been shown before by Professor John Pantoja, and you see the striation or crosswise asperities. Here in this experiment also performed at the university with eight to 20 current impulses, you see the 
the marks in several places and perpendicular to the current flow. That was the reason we started to, to study these problems and to understand what was happening. In the first uh, slides of Professor Pantoja, he has shown that uh, the change of conductivity could be the reason of this extreme behavior of the conducting textiles. Uh, in the case, for example, if we apply 30 kiloamps, 8 to 20, you see that voltage and current are in phase. It means that this is mainly a resistive behavior. But if the current start increasing, because we have here a subsequent 50 kiloamp in the samples we have seen before, you notice that the voltage is changing probably uh, due to the change in conductivity due to this melting process that it has been mentioned before. If we start increasing the current to 12,5 kilo ohms, A to 20, as a sub subsequent impulse current, you notice that the, the conducting mechanism is, has been changed completely. And probably this is a plasma behavior in the, in the material, as you will see a little later. This is mainly due to vaporization. In this case, we are talking about a plane wave fabric. By continuing the experiments with 10 times 10 centimeter sample, we have here a ripstop fabric, and you should notice that with four subsequent in current impulses, the marks in ripstop were not so important as in plain, plain wave fabric. And uh, this is the photograph of the tent that I has, uh, have presented before with 40 kilo ohms. The electrode was placed here. This uh, marks parallel to the current flow. Uh, to continue the experiments, uh, uh, Alejandro Cristancho went to Brazil to, to his stay, stay in the PhD stay with Professor Alessandro Pantini and Professor Milton Chigihara at the University of Sao Paulo. And he were testing 8 to 20 currents. You see here the test sample and the test sample is placed here in this place and you see the current will flow through the test sample and this is the voltage measuring system and in with 10 kilo ohm you notice the striation on the sample so but the interesting point was what's the behavior of current on voltage in this case with five kilo ohms we have this first photograph here current is in blue, which was mainly the current source, and voltage, this is probably this first part, is a measuring error due to the DIDT, the high DIDT in the first part. But you notice that the voltage and current are in phase with 5 kilo ohms. This drop on the sample was 160 volts. Later on, with 10 kilo ohms, you notice that the mechanism has been changed, mainly because the material was vaporized. This was a single sample, it is a new sample for each experiment. The voltage was increased to 600 and 40 volts, which is in the resistance was in the value of milliohms, still in milliohms but it has been increased a lot. With 50 kilo ohms, you notice this spark, which was mainly due to the vaporization of the material. And with 20 kilo ohms, you notice the same behavior and is before the peak of the current. It means it appears a little earlier due to the high current. To continue the experiments, I, I performed the experiment in uh, Uppsala University. Uh, I am here myself with Mabubu Raman and Dr. Andre Lovato. It was with the help of Professor Vernon Curry from Uppsala University. We have 
and ran the experiment, but he was not present during the experiment on that time. And we used 30 times 30 centimeter samples. It has exactly the same resistance value, 20 milli ohms. And when we apply, for example, 55 kilo ohms, 10, 350, we increase the, the current di dura duration, you see, 10 to 350. The waveform was before 8 to 20. It means we were applying a higher current, but a similar current density. In this experiment, we use a high-speed camera to see the behavior of the material. And we were able to take photographs of the event to understand what was happening here in the situation. And in this setup, what we have is uh, like a drum where we have the conducting material on the surface. We put the central electrode here and we apply 55 kilo ohms, 10, 350. And to see the dimension of the hole, this indicated the current density that the textile is able to support. Here we have the experiment. Uh, this is a direct photograph of the experiment. You see here, the current was flowing here across the material. You see the striation, but the most important event is the plasma that you have outside the material. The current were flowing outside of the material, mainly through this plasma. Uh, this is the crowbar impulse current generator, and you see here the connection of the the discharge, which is connected mod capacitors. And here uh, in the background, this is an impulse current generator that I, I have invented, which is the Roman generator, which is in Uppsala University. Some other experiment with 25 kilo ohms, 10, 350 shows the striation that we were observing, it means that we have here a plasma discharge on the surface of the material. And uh, with three, one sample with three currents on 25 kilo amps, you see that the current were flowing over the surface of the material. And the material was able to support the current density. Now uh, I perform some other experiment to uh, to test this material with the same current impulse at, in K KTH in Stockholm University with Professor Marle Becerra and uh, engineer Jan, Janne Nilsson. And we place also the same textile here, 10, 30 times 30 samples. This is the current flow direction. And you see here the high voltage prop to measure the voltage across the samples, and we have a Rogowski coil to measure the current. And this la laser was used to, to study the uh, vaporization of material with uh, spectroscopy. So, some examples here of the events that happened. Uh, you will see here, the current was applied, and then how the material is destroyed, but this destruction occurs after the current was conducted to the ground. It, means, it means that the material has been destroyed, but current uh, flows to the ground. Here we have another example, and here the material was melted just in the co contact points. And this last sample shows also the application of the current and the destruction in several places. And, uh, but the current also went to the ground. And finally, I would like to present uh, uh, with the fast speed camera with Professor Marley Becerra and engineer Jane Nielsen. We apply the current in this direction. This is the test sample. And you will see here what is happening uh, in the sample. You see several places where the material has been vaporized. The material was destroyed in some places, but you see here the connection is still, there is a connection with, through the plasma and you see some sparks 
small sparks on the rest of the material uh, until the material was completely vaporized. Um, it's a few seconds and I would show you again this photograph which is interesting. This film showing how the material is present here but it's in some places we have plasma connections. Uh, the camera was giving 19,000 frames per second. And this was with 10, 350 currents. Okay, that's it. the final idea is to use this conducting material in tents to protect people. Uh, with portable shelters. Now coming to the conclusion, I can say that a high current density generates a loss of conducting material and increase the material resistance. As a second conclusion, we see that there is a change in the conductive mechanism. And first we have, uh, mainly due to the increase of current density, when the current density increases, we have a plasma conduction mechanism. And we can also conclude that the experimental results let us infer that conductive fabrics can be used in portable lighting protection systems. As a future work we have to study, we are planning to study the dynamic behavior of the impedance of electroconductive textiles. We have to continue these studies and uh, we will test also actual size portable lining protection shelters. Thank you very much. I appreciate very much your presence. And if there are some questions, we can answer them. That's all.